الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأصلم على من بعث رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Welcome back to the series where we're discussing what the purpose of life is according to Islam what should be our goal in life what is our real purpose why we were created and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really wants from us as human beings as Muslims on this earth we already discussed uh, much about ubudiyah that being the first purpose of life to be in worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we are discussing we are continuing on the discussion around salah as being a means to that ubudiyah and we mentioned that it's one of the key pillars and we mentioned it's it's the identity of a muslim a muslim cannot really be thinking of him or herself as a true muslim without salah somebody who abandons the prayer somebody who neglects the salah the five times a day prayer we mentioned the warnings that the prophet some gave the description that he said between the non-muslim and the muslim is a salah between the non-muslim and the hypocrites and the muslim is a salah that's the distinguishing criteria that is what makes you a muslim the prayer the five times a prayer five times a day prayer so we already discussed those things so in the discussion of a salah we also mentioned its virtues and qualities one of them was that it cleanses you it washes away your sins five times a day just like somebody bathing five times a day in the river or having five times a day showers so it cleanses it takes away your sins it prevents you from evil prevents you from crime just by virtue of the timings of the prayer and by virtue of you being having to be present in salah in a pure state one of the things we mentioned in the last episode was about the remembrance of Allah in the salah and how the prayer is a, a great way or a great means of staying in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the virtues of just being in, in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Prophet was asked by uh, somebody who came to him and they, he said he said to the Prophet Sallallahu Ya Rasulullah, the laws and conditions of Islam have become too much for me, too many. Tell me something that I can always keep and preserve, so I can stick to. Just give me something that I can, you know, make sure I'm consistent and stick to this. The Prophet Sallallahu said, keep your tongue moist with the remembrance of Allah, with dhikrullah. Keep your tongue moist with the dhikrullah. First of all, you know, Islam, Sharia, yes, there, there are many, many rules and regulations, we know that. And uh, nobody's perfect, nobody can implement all of the rules and all of the times and follow all of the guidance of Sharia and Islam all of the time. As human beings, we're weak, we're created weak, we will make mistakes, we will find it burdensome sometimes to do some things. But here a man comes up to the Prophet ﷺ and he's very frank and honest with him. He said, you know, probably for him, he's finding all of these rules and obligations a bit too much for him. You know, he's finding it difficult. He's finding it um, quite hard to maybe be persistent in everything. So he wants a way out. You know, he wants a way where he can still be faithful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He can meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on good terms. So he asks the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, give me something which I can hold on to. And look at what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa gives him. He gives him something which is so easy or to, to practice and to do, yet it is very difficult to remember to do it. Dhikrullah. To, to remember Allah, to say subhanallah, to say astaghfirullah, to say la ilaha illallah, to say alhamdulillah. These words are so easy. It takes a few seconds to say it. There's no burden on you. There's no physical exertion. You can say it while you're lying down, sitting, walking, standing, in any position, in any place. It's so light on the tongue. As the hadith says, two words, you know, mentions two dhikrs, 
that are light, it's described as light on the tongue but heavy on the scales on the day of judgment. So the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is very light. So the Prophet he gives this man this nasiha, this advice, make sure your tongue is moist with the remembrance of Allah. How does your tongue become moist with the remembrance of Allah? If you say, Subhanallah, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, Astaghfirullah, or any of these things once or twice or a few times, your tongue will not become moist. Your tongue, tongue becomes moist when you repeat it often, when you've said it 30 times, 40 times, 50 times. When you say something again and again, this is when your tongue becomes moist because of the repetition of talking, of saying something, of movement of your mouth and tongue. So the Prophet advises this person, keep your tongue moist with dhikrullah. And this is not to say, the Prophet is not telling him give up everything else, obviously. He's saying, fine, you're struggling with other things, you know, you, you should continue and try your best. But here he's giving him an additional thing which is easy which he can stick to. So remember that there are many ways to enter into Jannah. There are many paths to go into Jannah. Obviously we have to do the obligatory things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to do. But look at the mercy of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi We have not sent you, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we have not sent you except as a mercy to the world. Look at his merciful teaching. He gives this man something so light and yet something which is so heavy on the scales on the Day of Judgment. Just remember to keep your tongue moist with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So again, we come back to this concern about remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Salah. And the whole reason why the Salah has been given as a fard, as an obligation, is so that we don't forget our purpose in life. We don't forget who we are. We don't forget our slavehood. We don't forget what is good for us in this life, where we're going, where we've come from. We remember our true identity. We begin to um, be in a state of dhikr, in a state of remembrance throughout the day and night. And we come out of the state of heedlessness, of ghafla, and of forgetfulness, of nisyan. We come out of these states. So this is why the Salah has been given. So what happens is people forget, people become heedless. And this is one of the key things that shaitan wants. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes in the Quran, إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ الشَّيْطَانُ أَن يُوْقِعَ بَيْنَكُمُ الْعَدَاوَةِ وَالْبَغْضَاءَ فِي الْخَمْرِ وَالْمَيْسِرِ وَيَسُدَّكُمْ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَعَنِ الصَّلَاءِ فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُنْتَهُونَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that indeed shaitan just wants to cause between you enmity, animosity and hatred. Through what? Through intoxicants, through alcohol, wine, etc. And, and through gambling. And then he wants you, why does he do this? To avert you. وَيَصُدَّكُمْ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ He wants you to forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He wants you to block, he wants to block you and prevent you from remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what will you do? You will be obeying and submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will be establishing your salah. But he wants to prevent you from remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَعَنِ الصَّلَاةِ And from salah and from performing salah, shaitan wants to prevent you from pre pre performing the salah because through the salah, remember shaitan's goal and mission is what? Is to divert you, is to take you into the hellfire along with him because he's going there, he wants to take you to the hellfire. So this is the mission of shaitan, this is his whole purpose. His whole goal and purpose in life is to divert humanity to the hellfire. So he wants to do this. How will he do it? By preventing you from remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make you busy with alcohol, with gambling and other vices and sins and uh, distractions. 
Why? Because he wants to prevent you from remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He wants to prevent you from remembering your purpose in life. And he wants to block you from establishing prayer, from praying. وَعَنِ الصَّلَىٰ from, from, And from your salah, from the salah. He wants to prevent you from praying. So will you not stop? Meaning will you not give up alcohol and uh, uh, gambling and other things that distract you? from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is, you know, the key thing here is the reason why we are missing or some people are missing salah. The reason why this happens is because they're not remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the reason why that happens is because shaitan is misguiding them, distracting them away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from his remembrance. So inshallah we'll come back after the break. Assalamu alaikum.